I recently made a film called The Cleansing Hour. It's a short proof of concept for the feature length version of a movie about two guys who run a webcast where they stream live exorcisms that they've staged to make look real until one day they get a girl who's actually possessed and then in front of millions of viewers worldwide they have to figure out how they're going to deal with it. The sapphire effects became an important part of the storytelling process as I was editing and I'd like to show you some examples of exactly how. As I said, the film is about these two guys who run an exorcism webcast and once I began the edit it became important to establish a difference between the webcast look and the standard look. The builder became perfect for this because I could stack multiple effects together into a single effect that I would drop on top of just one clip and establish my webcast look right away. Okay, getting started here in the timeline with my webcast footage, you can see that uh, the bottom layer here is just the footage by itself, and then I put um, a bug for the cleansing hour webcast here, and then a streaming live bug on top of that. Um, and I wanted to treat this footage to, to give it a, a look separate from the primary acquisition camera, which is this red camera here. Um, and uh, you can see the girls looking at it here on her, on her screen. That's actually an effect shot. Um, we wanted to create a look that made this webcast footage look different from, from this footage. So um, let's start by grabbing our S effect and we're going to use the builder to build our look. And I'm alt dragging here on top of this matte key um, so that it applies to not just the footage but also to the bug as well. I want to affect everything on the screen. Um, the other thing I also want to point out here is that you'll notice that this webcast footage is actually in a different aspect ratio from the red camera footage. We actually shot um, the red camera um, in a two to one aspect ratio and the Blackmagic camera that we use for shooting the webcast footage is actually in a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So um, in addition to creating the webcast look, I'm actually going to also add in a mask so that we can mask off this, this footage to match this footage here. So once you have your S effect on top of your footage, I'm going to go into effect mode and click on edit effect, which will open up the builder. And let's start with the mask. There are a couple of different ways you can mask your image using the Sapphire effects. My preference is using vignette. Grab vignette, drop it onto your source footage. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and rename this node to mask. We already have one here that says mask. We're not going to use the mask input right now. Um, so we want to give this a slightly different name. I'll just call it mask one. Okay, and um, the, we're, we want to turn down some of these different parameters so that we can get rid of the uh, natural vignette look. The first one is edge softness. We're going to put that all the way down to zero. Um, we're also going to bump up the squareness entirely so to one. So now we've got a square. And now we want to make the width wider than the image itself. And then finally, I'm going to bring my relative height down until I'm cropping the image horizontally. All right, so we'll start about right there. Okay, um, now let's just turn off all these parameters because I'll adjust this mask later on to make it match my uh, two to one footage once I get back into Avid. So the only parameter I wanna have turned on for my mask right now is relative height. All right, so the mask is gonna be the last thing on the picture. I'm gonna move that all the way down here so that everything from my webcast look is gonna go in between. So the first thing I started with was some JPEG damage. I love JPEG damage because it um, is a way of degrading your image and giving a very natural digital look, similar to what you would see um, on a webcast, you know, or on a uh, on a on a live stream. So JPEG damage is pretty great. So I'm going to grab JPEG damage, drop that onto source and start working with it. And you can see how it breaks up the image into these digital blocks. I didn't want to degrade the image too much because the quality of streaming these days is you know, really pretty good. So I bumped my quality up here pretty high initially. And then as the, as the movie you know, progressed, as the story progressed, and as things got more crazy, I would then dial, dial down the quality and actually degrade the quality further. Next, I wanted to do a little color correction to it. So a good way of doing color correction with the Sapphire effects, just a very basic color correction is with hue, saturation, brightness, which is what I dropped on next. And then I, um, you, I use this really to sort of crush the blacks because in compressed footage, the blacks usually get crushed, the whites usually get clipped. So um, I would offset darks a little bit and bump up the brightness 
just to sort of blow out the lights a little bit more and crush the blacks a little bit more. I also pulled down some of the saturation since also compressed footage always looks a little bit desaturated and not very good. The next thing that I thought we should do is tint the picture. So we want to tint it so that we can we can get that look that is more in line with the palette of the film. And, and S tint is the best option. So drop a tint right on there. All right. And then I went in and started tinting the lights um, and trying to figure out a, a color that looks best um, for the movie. I didn't want to go this dark, but uh, that's in the ballpark. So um, I lightened it up a bit and that looks pretty good. And I can always adjust it later and then maybe bump up my lights a bit more. All right. Looking pretty good. And then finally to, uh, to round it out, um, I want to put a vignette on there to actually darken the edges a little bit more. So just the regular old vignette and we'll see how that looks. Okay. I really don't need to tweak this too much. Um, I could play with the radius. I can make it a little bit less dark on the sides. Um, but that looks pretty good. The other thing I might want to do is adjust the relative height because I do have the mask on the picture. So if I want the edges at the top and the bottom to also show up as vignetted, I might want to reduce the relative height a little bit. You see how that darkens the top and bottom more. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. So let's click on OK. And then we'll go back into Avid. And you can see we can go in and adjust any of these parameters here that we want from our effect editor. The next one that I want to change before we get to anything else though is our mask. I want to make the relative height of our mask here match our 2 to 1 footage. So I'm just going to A, B this ever so slightly until I get my mask matching my red footage. So now that I've established this look, then all I have to do is save this effect to a bin, call it webcast, and just drop it on any clip that I want in my timeline to use later. The other way that I use Sapphire Effects in editorial was to enhance effects that we had already done in camera. So for example, there was a portion in the film when the girl slash demon sitting in the chair causes a giant boom in the room that shakes the room and makes the lights flash. Well, we shook the camera and shook portions of the set. We also flickered the lights that were hanging overhead, but I wanted to enhance those so that it would look better. So you can see here in the edit without the without any effects applied to it, we got the shaking set, we got the vibrating wall with the cross that turns upside down. Um, and I thought, you know, this would look that we could sell this a lot better if we actually shook the picture a little bit. So for this, I relied on S shake and we can find that under the distort category. Just grab shake and we'll take a look at this. I'll go into effect mode and we'll look what it, you can see what it does here. Um, and it's default setting. Not exactly what I wanted. Um, I knew that this was going to have to be something that I would keyframe. So um, I'll go in here. I'll zoom in a bit. I already have my marker set here on the timeline for where the keyframe should start. Um, and I'll go in and start tweaking these settings to make it look like I want. The first thing I'll do is I'll set a keyframe for all parameters and adjust the amplitude to zero because I don't want to have any shake happening at first. And then frequency, we'll just start that at four and Z distance is not going to change. Um, I definitely want to have some motion blur here. So I want to turn that up to 2.5 for the time being. Then I'll move over one frame and set a new keyframe here. And then we'll bump it all up and we'll say amplitude 0.5. This is going to make the shake much more subtle than what we had initially set in the default settings. And we can see how that looks. Okay, that's getting closer. You notice we don't have any motion blur turned on right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and say motion blur yes, quick. Okay, I'm liking that. You see, I've got a mask set on the track up here at the top, and it's shaking the entire image, and I don't wanna necessarily see the whole image shake. So um, we're going to disguise that a little bit 
by making sure, first of all, that our wrap setting is set to reflect, which is good. And then I'm also going to go to crop transform input here and just scale it up a little bit. Okay. I want to make sure that our scale is set the same. I can just delete this keyframe. Now we want to make this taper off a bit. So I'm going to set a keyframe a couple frames down under amplitude so that it tapers off to that point. Let's just say point 0.2 here. That looks pretty good. The next shot was this one here. And what I think I'll do is, since I already have my settings pretty much set from this one, is I'll just take this S shake and drop it onto this clip. And I will delete all these keyframes. So now we've got the same vibration setting from the previous clip, but I think it should still be tapering off here. So I'm just going to alt drag my keyframe over here to the front of the clip and we'll just have this taper off. So by the time we get to the end of the clip, let's set a new keyframe here and have it taper down to 0.08. And then I'll just change my seed so that it's not the exact same pattern of shake. That's better. And then whenever I got over here to our cross shot, I'll just drag my shake over here. At this point, I was thinking, okay, so the shake should be a lot less intense at this point. We've tapered off a bit more, so I'll just pick it up around where we left off on the previous shot. Say 0.08 again. And then maybe by the time it's halfway through the clip, give or take, we've gotten down nearly to zero. Let's see. Nice. Maybe the head of this is a bit much. Do some even more. Next, I have these lights here, and you can see how in the footage they're flickering on their own, but I wanted to increase the intensity of the flicker. And this is something that sort of was used regularly throughout the film. The lights would flicker, but I wanted to make them flicker even more intensely. And there actually is a flicker effect included with Sapphire under the time category. S flicker is really great for this. In this part of the movie here, we can see that the lights above are flickering pretty intensely, but I have this cutaway of these lights, and the flicker just really isn't very intense. So this is where S flicker became very handy. So I'll just drop an S flicker onto this clip and let's see how if we can make this match a little bit better. So I'm definitely gonna wanna bump the amplitude up significantly. So we'll say 0.8 and then um, random luma amp, I'll turn that up a smidge. And then random frequency, let's go down to 10 and let's see what this looks like. So that looks a lot more intense now compared to what it was before, this bypass. The S flicker really speeds the flicker up. It gives it a little bit more of a frenetic feel, which helps, I think, tremendously. Same thing on this guy. You can see we've got an S flicker on there. And let's take a look at what the regular footage looked like. I'll bypass it. Here's what the source footage looked like, a slower flicker. But with S flicker turned on, it's much more intense. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I wanna demonstrate that after you have locked your picture and you're ready to go to finishing and conform, that it's very easy to take your effects from your Avid timeline into an application like DaVinci Resolve, for example, and easily recreate all of the effects that you had in your timeline. The way we did this on the cleansing hour was I went through the timeline and everywhere there was an effect like this one, for example, our webcast, I would actually save it as a preset with the starting time code of the clip.
And then whenever we went over into Resolve, I would be able to pull that up again and easily apply it to the clip and it would look identical to how it looked in the timeline. So for example, we have an S effect here to create our webcast look. And I would always make note of my starting time code here at the very beginning of the clip. So 085504. So when I go into effect mode, I'll click save preset and I will name it 085504 webcam and click save. Now, whenever we go over into Resolve, I'll search for that and it will show up in my preset browser. The same thing would go for um, other effects like S Shake. Something to note, however, is for the time being, keyframes do not translate. So while the settings for the particular effect will transfer over, all of these parameters will transfer, um, I believe, based on the last keyframe that was set you will have to go back and manually keyframe in Resolve. But for the time being, I'll show you how we can transfer this effect as well. So from the beginning of the clip, we'll see that I'll make note of the time code 085720, save preset, 085720, shake. I'll click save. And let's do a flicker as well. Let's say this guy right here. Okay, save preset 085919. 085919 flicker and click save. Over in Resolve with my conform timeline, just find the clip that has the effect on it. Go over to your open effects search field. In this case, the webcast was an S effect, so type in S effect. Drop it onto your node load preset 085504 webcam there it is load and you can see that it looks identical to the way that it looked in Avid but now let's add the flicker and it matches my Avid timeline exactly